how do you follow all that love? <laughs> that is a lot of love to come out of three people preceding you when you're going to get up to a podium and, and say something to a room full of people like this. Um, but I'll do my best. Um, David Zarin, in the green room before we came out uh, here tonight, asked me, he said, what happened? How did you get into this? What was the beginning of the story? And I thought, I've told this story a lot, but I'm going to tell it once more. Because he hadn't heard it, he said he thought I should. So here we go. Um, I tapped a gig in Tel Aviv at the Haikon uh, Stadium onto the end of a European tour in 2006. And immediately I started getting uh, emails from um, all kinds of people. But one of the people I got the email from was Omar Barghouti, who two years before had been part of the committee that started the BDS movement in Palestine. Why is this thing binging at me like that? Could somebody take a call? Thank you so much. <laughs> So anyway, here's what happened. Um, they tried to prevail upon me to cancel the show that I was going to do there, and I did cancel it because I, I was um, I was persuaded by their arguments, um, but I, I came to a compromise and I moved my show to an agricultural community halfway between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem called Never Shalom in Arabic, Wahab Asalam. And, uh, which is um, a multi-faith, kind of ecumenical uh, community where Jews and Druze and Christians and Muslims all live together with their children and the children all school together and they all um, cooperate with one another. And it is uh, an expression of brotherhood and love. So we did a gig there in the middle of an empty um, chickpea field. And it was the biggest gig anybody ever had in Israel. There were 60,000 people there. I was doing a Dogs Out of the Moon tour at the time. And the audience took our sounds to get in and blah, 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 blah. They spent the whole night going like they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got nothing against that. I love that, personally. <laughs> uh, but they did. Um, until we got to the end of the evening, when I said, I stood up in front of all that, and said, um, you are the generation of young Israelis who must make peace with your brothers and sisters in the neighborhood and bring in a new era of etc, etc, etc. And they went from to what the fuck's it took? <laughs> in a heartbeat. And it was one of the most chilling sights I've ever seen in my life. I saw it later in various parts of Israel when I went back the next year. Anyway, that is the start of the story. I went back the next year and traveled all around the West Bank. And it was a chilling experience, even though uh, I was under the protection of the United Nations and a lovely woman called Allegra Pachea who worked for UNRWA at the time. Um, I was devastated by my personal witness of the apartheid and oppression and uh, stealing and dispossession that I witnessed. And so I've been a, a, a small part of this movement ever since those times. Okay, moving on. Um, I was going to talk about Paris in 1948 and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but Mark covered all that, so I'm screwing. <laughs> 